Joining us to talk about the discovery of gravitational waves is Rhett Elaine uh, from Wired. Welcome, Rhett. Hi, thank you. It's great to have you here. here. So first of all, let's, uh, I want to start off with an audio clip. This is basically the foundation of the discovery that we're going to talk about today. Can you play that? <laughs> Did that little tweep? That little tweep. That, yeah, those chirps. All right, so there you go. Those chirps you hear are the sound of two black holes colliding more than a billion light years away. Uh, Red, explain to us why this is such a significant piece of audio. Um, because it shows the direct measurement of a gravitational wave. Uh, Einstein predicted that there would be gravitational waves, but it, you just can't detect them. I mean, we've had evidence that they exist before, but we never detect them directly. So this oscillation chirp thing that you hear is due to these two black holes uh, spiral, spiraling into each other is very significant. I mean, it's a new way. It's a new way to do astronomy. It's, it's like we can look at things and now we can also detect them with gravitation waves. It, it's, it's really cool. And ultimately listen to them. So like you said, Einstein first imagined the existence of gravitational waves literally like a, centu a century ago in 1915 to the month. So this yeah. was this was a hundred years ago, basically. Um, who who's responsible for this particular discovery now, and how long have they been working to kind of uh, seek out this evidence? Ah, the this the gravitational thing. wave thing is, I mean, it's been going on for a long time. You know, we're talking 1970s. They started looking for these things. They started to come up with ideas of how can we detect them. You know, Einstein said they should be there, but how do we detect it? Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's a really amazing story because uh, you come up with different ideas, different strategies for detecting these gravitational waves. They're tiny, tiny, tiny uh, fluctuations in space-time, so they're not easy to detect. And, and in fact, that's why we need something like a massive event of colliding black holes to even have a signal that's detectable. I mean, there's lots of things that would make signals, but you just can't detect them. So, you know, starting from 1970, coming up with different ideas, thinking about what events would even be able to make a detectable gravitational wave uh, how often do those events happen? You know, these are things that nobody knows. So you you really fly and blind here. And it's amazing that that you can follow the journey from 1970 to today. And when we actually have a discovered detectable gravitational waves, it's it's really cool. 